Today, we are talking all things electrical traps. Now, we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. Electrical traps are extremely useful in seven days to die, especially for horde base designs and basic base defense. These items can be strategically placed to help you stem the tide of an oncoming horde. So today we're going to go through each of the electrical traps. We'll discuss what skills you need in order to unlock crafting these traps, what items you'll need to craft these traps, the basic uses for each of these traps, and I'll provide some tips and and tricks on how to use them most effectively. So let's head inside and take a look at our very first electrical trap, the electric fences. Now in order to craft electrical fences, you will need to open up advanced engineering level three. This actually opens up the ability to craft all of the electrical traps, electric fences, blade traps, and dart traps. All three of these are opened up at level three. Or you can also find the schematics out in the world or purchase the schematics from the traders. Now let's take a look at actually crafting the electric fence post. In order to craft one electric fence post, you are going to need need six forged iron and two electrical parts. The crafting recipe for this item is pretty cheap. However, keep in mind that you will need at least two electric fence posts in order to make an electric fence. So now let's go ahead and demonstrate how these bad boys actually work. Throw our electric fence post down in our inventory here and we are going to set them up. So I'm gonna set one right here and we'll set one right here. Now all you need to do is bust out your wire tool. You're going to connect it from the generator bank to the first electric fence post and then connect the first post to the second post. There you go. Now you'll see this blue blue wire running across between the, the posts, that is your electric fence line. Now keep in mind that each electric fence post costs five watts of power. So generating just one electric fence line will cost you 10 watts of power. Now all you have to do is turn on your generator. Now that fence is live. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in a zombie jerk and let's demonstrate how this bad boy works. And of course we've got our good friend zombie Arlene, she is always willing to help. Let's go ahead and turn her AI back on and we'll get her to walk through that electric fence. And you'll notice as soon as she comes in contact with the electric fence, she gets electrocuted and pretty much stops moving. That's one of the great things about the electric fence. They will really, really slow down the zombies. Also, if we take a look, you'll notice that that electric fence did 24 points of damage to zombie Arlene. Another really great thing about the electric fence is you can actually string multiple fences together in a line. So like I can put one here, I can put one here, I can put one here and just kind of dot them all around and then you can just connect them in a string so we can connect that one to this one we can connect this one to this one and we can connect this one to this one and now we've got a nice little box of electric wires all the way around Oop. <laughs> And yes, they will shock you too, but I'm in God mode, so it's not gonna hurt me. But that's one of the great things about electric fences is you can create very elaborate mazes of electric fences. Now, one important thing to keep in mind with the electric fences is they actually sit up two blocks. So this wire here is running at the top of block number two. So for things like spiders and dogs and smaller zombies like that, they will actually walk right underneath of your electric fence. So you may want to do something like like this, place it down here and here, and then we'll connect those up. There you go. Now you'll notice that the wire sits much closer to the ground, meaning that even the dogs and the spiders will get tripped up by the electric fence. Now, one more thing I wanted to demonstrate with the electric fence, you can actually wire fences through blocks. So I'm gonna place one fence here and we're gonna place one fence right there. And I'm going to hook the generator up to the first one and we're gonna connect the second one like so. So you'll see the wire actually travels through the block, but if we walk through it, it is still active on this side 
as well as this side. So you can string electric fences through walls, through blocks, through things like that. You don't, you're not actually stopped by a solid wall, though you can actually wire it straight through. That can make for some very, very interesting electric fence post designs. You can create quite an elaborate web of electric fences throughout your base. Next up on our list of electrical traps is the blade trap. Once again, crafting blade traps can be opened up at advanced engineering level three. And in order to craft the blade trap, you're gonna come to your workbench with 13 forged iron, 13 forged steel, 10 mechanical parts, seven electrical parts, and 13 oil. And let me show you exactly how the blade traps work. So blade traps cost 20 watts of electricity. So we're gonna go ahead and wire these up to our generator bank and we'll just wire them up into a chain here. There we go. Let's get our generator bank turned on here. Excellent. And let's bring in our zombie volunteer. And there we have the lovely Arlene. We're gonna turn her AI back on and get her to stumble her way towards us here. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh man. And just like that, Arlene is down. It took uh, four whacks from the blade in order to uh, chop her to bits and take her down. So blade traps are extremely, extremely powerful. You also have to be very, very careful because blade traps work just as effectively against you as they do the zombie jerks. One of my favorite things to do with the blade traps is to actually create a path that the zombies are going to follow and just line that path or dot that path with blade traps. So as the zombies are running down a certain path, the entire time they're getting whacked by the blade traps as they're trying to make their way to you. It's a very, very effective way to take out a whole bunch of zombie jerks. Now blade traps are a little bit on the expensive side. They're one of the more expensive traps in the game, but if used properly, they can be extremely, extremely effective. And the last electrical trap we want to talk about today is the dart trap. Once again, the dart trap can be unlocked at advanced engineering level three. In order to craft your dart trap, you're going to need 26 forged iron, seven mechanical parts, five electrical parts, and six oil. Now dart traps are a little bit unique because they actually require ammo in order to be utilized. So you're going to also have to craft up some iron dart ammo. In order to craft up the dart ammo, you will need to come over to your forge here and it will take three iron and one clay in order to produce one iron dart ammo. Now you are going to need a lot of ammo depending on how you have your dart traps set up. So once you get to the point where you are actually manufacturing dart traps, setting them up and pumping out ammo, it is a good idea to keep this iron dart ammo flowing. While it's relatively cheap and fast to make, you will go through a lot of iron dart ammo. So now let's take a look at exactly how the dart traps work. As you see on my screen, here we've got our little dart trap ghost image there and you'll notice that green arrow right in the in the front there pointing out that indicates where the darts will actually be fired from so this green arrow indicates the front of your dart trap so let's say we're going to be placing it against this wall here what we'll want to do is rotate it until the arrow is pointing out now we can go ahead and place it down there we go and let's take a closer look at the actual dart trap itself now the darts will come out of the center hole. There are five holes, one, two, three, four, and five, but the darts actually come out the center hole. They don't come out every single one. And dart traps take 10 watts of electricity. So the first thing we're gonna do is hook up our generator to our dart trap. There we go, now it has power. And now let's go ahead and interact with the dart trap. That will bring up this menu right here. This is the ammo slot. So we'll go ahead and load in our ammo. And you always wanna make sure you click the lock ammo button. If you don't lock the ammo in, it will not fire. Oop, lock it in. You'll see the padlocks. That indicates that the ammo is locked. The dart trap is ready to roll. Now, if we go ahead and just turn on our generator, you'll notice that the dart trap starts firing and it will continue to fire until it runs out of ammunition. So let's go ahead and turn our generator off so that way it does not continue to fire. And we're gonna do a little bit of a damage check with this. So let's unlock here. Let's grab all of our ammo. Let's put one dart back into the dart trap and we are going to bring in a zombie Arlene right here. There we go. And now she's got 125 health to start. Let's go ahead and turn on our generator and lock our ammo. 
There we go. <laughs> and it fired. See, that's why it's important to lock the ammo. It will not fire if the ammo is not locked. And we'll take a look at Arlene. That did 45 points of damage. So the dart traps are extremely, extremely powerful. The dart traps are actually one of my favorite traps in the game. However, they can be a little difficult to manage, primarily because the darts will just continue to fire until the trap runs out of ammo. So hooking a dart trap directly up to a generator is probably not the best way to go about it. I would recommend using things like trigger plates or motion sensors or trip wires in order to set the dart traps off. That'll save you a lot of ammunition and make it so your dart traps only go off when you want them to go off. So the next thing we wanna test is the range of the dart trap. How far do these darts actually travel? So I've got my dart trap sitting on the 40 block mark right there. And then every 10 blocks, I have placed a zombie Arlene. And we're going to see how far this thing can shoot. Will it be able to shoot all the way down here and kill this zombie Arlene? Let's find out. So we're going to go ahead and turn on our generator. I've got it all locked and loaded and ready to roll. So yes, first Arlene is down. Second Arlene is down. And it looks like it's going, it looks like it goes to about here. So let's do this. Yep. Right about there is where the edge is. So let's just toss this down as a reference and let's see how far away we are. So one, two, three. So right there, the fourth block in is where the dart trap actually stops firing. So we are 10, 20, we're about 26 blocks that the, the darts will travel before they are no longer effective. So dart traps have a pretty decent range. They can fire about 26 blocks. One of my favorite things to do with a dart trap is to create some kind of killing corridor or tunnel of death or a, just some path that the zombies have to run down. And then at the end of that path, you place down a couple of dart traps. That way the zombies are running straight ahead towards the, the dart traps and they are just getting shredded by your darts. You can set it up so that there's uh, trigger plates or trip wire posts that the zombies run across to activate your dart traps in order to save darts. But putting a dart trap at the end of a tunnel that the zombies have to run down is an excellent, excellent way to use this electrical trap. The electrical traps in Seven Days to Die are downright awesome. They are extremely effective at slowing down and taking out them zombie jerks. When placed strategically around your base, they can make for an excellent defensive system against the zombies. And like most things in Seven Days to Die, your imagination is the only limitation on these items. You can come up with some extremely creative ways to use these electrical traps. The main thing that you want to remember is how exactly each of these traps works. That way, when you are designing your horde base, you can place these traps in the most strategic and effective places possible. But again, folks, let your imagination go wild. I would love to see what you guys come up with. If you want to share your trap designs with me, head on over to the Discord channel and post your trap design screenshots in our Horde Bases section. I would love to see what you folks come up with. The invite link to the Discord server is in the description of this video. Or you can just leave me a comment below and let me know how you folks utilize the electric traps. Now one more thing I did want to point out about electric traps. The damage that these bad boys do is not affected by difficulty settings. So no matter if you are on the easiest difficulty or the hardest difficulty, traps will always do the same amount of damage. Just another excellent benefit of using electrical traps in seven days to die. I hope you folks have found this video helpful and or enjoyable. If you did and you'd like to see more, I've created a very special playlist of electricity tutorials that you can access by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me in Savin's World. And remember, Remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.